It's Friday, February 18, 2011. I'm Kevin McShann, and this is the McShann Sports Beat Report. Miguel Cabrera has been charged with DUI and resisting arrest in St. Lucie County, Florida. Police say the Tigers' first baseman was sitting in his vehicle on the side of the road with smoke coming from the engine. When a deputy questioned him, Cabrera reportedly grabbed a bottle of scotch and started drinking. And then he resisted getting into a police vehicle. For more on this breaking news, we welcome into Sports Center Major League Baseball insider Buster Olney. Buster, this is not the first time, as you know, Cabrera has had trouble involving alcohol. 2009, during a key series against the White Sox, Cabrera arrested after he got into a fight with his wife. He had a blood alcohol reading of 26. What kind of fallout might Cabrera face? This news has to be devastating for the Detroit Tigers because, Linda, I'm sure you remember, after that incident in 2009, during that offseason, he got treatment uh, that was related to his use of alcohol. And when he showed up in spring training last year, he looked like a completely different person. People you talked to who knew him said he sounded completely different. He went on to have the best season of his career, 38 homers, 126 RBI. He finished second in the American League in the, in the most valuable player voting. And generally speaking around baseball, he's considered to be the second best right-handed hitter behind Albert Pujols. And now going on the eve of spring training, the Tigers get this news that Miguel Cabrera has had this incident. It has to be a great concern for them. He turns 28 in April, and he's entering year four of what is a $154 million contract. Dave Dombrowski was the one after the incident a couple of years ago, or 18 months ago, who went and got him out of jail that morning. Presumably, Dave Dombrowski will be dealing with this issue the entire day. When can we expect to hear from Miguel Cabrera, Buster? Well, he's not in spring training yet. Position players won't report and are not scheduled to report until next week. So it may be we don't hear from him until then. But certainly if you're the Tigers, one of the big concerns that you would have is if Miguel Cabrera has an alcohol-related issue like this one, has he gone back uh, and can now is this something that they're going to have to address in terms of a long-term problem in the way that it was addressed during the last offseason? Arrested, blood alcohol reading of .26 for Miguel Cabrera. Baseball insider Busta only. Thanks for the info. Thanks, Linda. All men make mistakes, but only wise men learn from their mistakes. And for Detroit Tigers first baseman Miguel Cabrera, a momentary lapse in repeat judgment may lead for him to a public relations nightmare after he was arrested late Wednesday for suspicion of drunken driving in Florida. Cabrera was arrested approximately 110 miles southeast of Lakeland, Florida, where the Tigers hold spring training. Pitchers and catchers have already reported. However, position players aren't expected to report until Saturday. Top Tigers officials held a closed-door meeting on Thursday morning to discuss Cabrera's arrest. According to Jason Beck, the Tigers beat writer for MLB.com. According to the police report, Cabrera was wandering into the road, cursing at officers with his hands up before getting in the back of a squad car. The report also quotes Cabrera as saying, Do you know who I am? You don't know anything about my problems. One deputy had to strike Cabrera several times in the thigh with knee spikes to get him to go in the back 
of the squad car and take him in to custody. He was charged with driving under the influence and resisting an officer without violence. He posted a $1,350 bond and was released from jail at 7.45 on Thursday morning. Cabrera signed an eight-year extension with the Tigers worth $152.3 million in 2008. He is under contract with the club until the 2015 season. Tigers president, general manager, and chief executive officer Dave Dombrowski provides his initial reaction to the news that his superstar player had fallen victim to his alcoholism yet again in less than two years. I know everybody's been sitting all day and trying to uh, figure out what's going on. And, and really, from my perspective at this point, I don't have a lot to add at this time. Uh, I'm in a position where uh, there's pending legal matters that are involved. Uh, if you've all read the police report, as I have, uh, I don't really have a lot of additional information, and we continue to evaluate and to gather information. I have spoken to Miguel. I have spoken to his representatives. Uh, I have spoken to the commissioner's office, who in turn has talked to the Players Association. They will be involved in gathering information and evaluating the process also. And really, in addition to that, I do not have anything more. I think I will continue to know more tomorrow. But really, for today, I, I don't I don't have any more to add than that. But Dave, this isn't just a legal issue, though, with alcohol involved with his past situation. Does that trouble you that alcohol appears to be involved again? Well, I, I don't really, I, I can't really get into much at this point because I'm still evaluating. I don't know really all the 100% the, the facts on it. I need to get more information before I can really make some comments on can, it. Can this, it's just too early right now for me. Can you tell us where he is now, Dave? He's at his home. Is, is there any chance of becoming a lake? Um, we're still talking about that right now. He, he would love to be here tomorrow, um, but we still need to work through some of this. Dave, one of your players said the first thought when it happened was about him as a person. And, and basically the ball player second. You echo that? Yeah. You know, I, I mean, of course, I've known him for a long time, and I, uh, when you hear a report like this, you just want to find out what's taking place. And I mean, and there are there are legal ramifications in, in keeping these things to yourself at this point. But it's a situation, you know, you worry about the player. I, I just saw him, and, and I know he's been working out on a regular basis. He's been doing that in South Florida. He's been going to batting practice. He's been going there early, um, basically every day. So he's been working out hard. So I don't really know what happened. Do you, would you did not expect him to be here Saturday? I do not know that at this time. Do you might know more tomorrow whether? Yes. Okay. yes. I think, I, I mean, before we make a, anything about is he capable of reporting, yes. But I think we need to find out more information if, if he'll be here. He wants to be here. Can you say that it's hit you like a ton of bricks? Oh, it was completely shocked. Yeah, I mean, I had no idea. I was just, uh, first of all, I didn't think there were any problems there because he, it has been thoroughly addressed. But I also am aware that and I've said this all along, when you deal with issues of, um, with alcohol, um, that it's a constant uh, battle for a person in the rest of their lives. And so, again, I don't know where it stands uh, exactly by any means, but I was completely surprised. I had no idea. And when I was told this morning, I was just taken back. And I've known him a long time. And whenever uh, something like he's always very feels bad and he's apologetic and he says, well, we'll talk later on. You just need to sort through what took place with your representatives there, and we'll talk at some point later on. Well, we saw him at the caravan, just when he was in for the caravan. So he was there, what was that, that's three weeks ago? And I know he's been working out since then on a regular basis. It's, it's close to thinking that he was in charge and in control of himself, and was this, this problem all through last year, he would have yeah. gotten nothing to support him. He's been, he did very well from all my knowledge. Yeah. David, you Oh, yeah, he'll be here at some point, sure. Is it, is it too early to say? I'm assuming the club will fully support him? Oh, we fully support him, sure. We fully support him in trying to get help for his situation, yes. I mean, I, I mean, that's, I think, is you do that for anybody you know. I don't know if it was a employee, a friend, um, whatever it may be, when somebody runs into this, and I've run into many, many situations in life with, people that have had a problem that you try to do what you can help. Them. But, I mean, it's also tough help sometimes, too. Oh, right. I mean, but, yes, you support them to try to help them. Yes, and we will do that. We'll do that. It's you as a general manager. Is this why you have 
long since probably stopped trusting situations where when, when everything seems to be run, running smoothly? Well, I don't think I've ever been through a year that everything hasn't been, uh, that's everything's been smooth as silk. So it's, it, and it's not, never going to have a year like that. And you just, uh, I think um, we've got a, an issue here that needs to be addressed and helped, and we're going to do that, and we'll go from there. What are the what are the chances he would have time away from the club for counseling? I don't know that. Did that can you say that's a possibility? I don't know. That, that those type things are not even in my, those are in experts' hands. Those okay. are not in my hands. I, I mean, I've always, with these type of situations, um, not just this, any time I've been involved with this, there's people that are experts, and these are our doctors that handle these type of situations. The commissioner's office and players' association, they work very closely together in trying to help these type of situations. And so their knowledge far exceeds mine and, and those type of things. And you really follow their recommendations is what you end up doing. Yeah, that's not tough support or tough love. Is that a result of this being the second time? No, not necessarily. I think that's any time you see that. At times it's not. I didn't say it is. I said at times it is. Yeah. Is it too early to look at possible baseball ramifications for your roster or anything like that? Is that is it too early to yes. you think through contingencies? Yeah. Dave, I know you don't like to degrade things necessarily, but in terms of severity, how, how serious a situation is this for this team? Well, I can't answer that at this question. I, I don't think it's going to... I mean, I know our team well enough. They'll go out in the field and they'll do their jobs. I fully expect Miguel Cabrera to be with us and I mean I've been involved with these type of treatment situations in the past but it's still too early to make that a 100% type statement but I would anticipate that. Miguel Cabrera is one of the most talented and skilled players in all of baseball however he's exhibited a pattern of behavior over the last 18 months which would suggest to any reasonably intelligent person that he has a drinking problem. And before he can think about taking the field for the Old English D in 2011 and beyond, he has to make sure that he gets his personal affairs and problem with alcoholism in check before he even thinks about playing baseball. This isn't a blip on the radar, and it needs to be treated as such. As for the Tigers, they now must make sure that they provide all of the necessary resources to their superstar athletes to make sure that their season isn't lost before it even begins, and the life of their best player on their roster gets put back on track. Kevin McShan, McShan, Sports Beat, Report.